In your professional opinion, what constitutes ethical public relations? I think ethical public relations uh, is a factor of mainly uh, adhering to what you believe is truthful uh, in presenting your clients, representing your client in a way that serves his interest, but only in so far as you can be truthful in what you uh, purport uh, to be the message, the facts. Uh, I think truth is, or the closest thing you can come to truth, uh, is the essence of uh, ethical public relations. Uh, also, uh, being uh, sensitive to uh, whom you are representing. Uh, I believe that uh, every institution, every person is entitled to have public relations representation. Uh, I do not believe that I am compelled in any way or manner to be the one who provides that counsel representation. Uh, on the other hand, I think that uh, there are unpopular causes which are legitimate and with which I may not agree. Uh, I do not think it unethical for me to represent that client uh, as long as I can do so in a way that my client is not compromised by my bias or disagreement with what the cause or the purpose is. Uh, I think that uh, I am an advocate for a client, uh, just as a lawyer is an advocate, that I am engaged to motivate individuals or groups to take a position or to take an action that my client seeks to have taken. Uh, I think I should, however, as a public relations professional, uh, make the judgment on whether I represent such a client by asking myself the question, is what this client wants to do in the public interest? And I think that is a, a factor that uh, is very important, sometimes overlooked. Uh, the fact is, I believe that no action can be sustained or successful if in the long run it is not in the public interest. When hiring or selecting uh, senior people for your organization, what abilities and characteristics are most important to you? It depends on the job. Uh, generally, the characteristics that we look for in everybody are uh, integrity, uh, uh, an intellectual curiosity, uh, commitment to a good work ethic, uh, broad general knowledge of what is going on in the world around him or her, and particularly so in senior hires today, uh, a knowledge base in a field where we need expertise so that we can uh, substantively uh, advise our clients. 
uh, if we're looking for an environmental specialist, we want someone who has had experience with environmental organization, with environmental regulations, with the enforcement of our environmental regulations. If it's in the healthcare field, we want someone who really knows the pharmaceutical industry, someone who knows how FDA works. Increasingly, uh, we are a knowledge-based company uh, where we provide counsel on what the, de what the decision should be, uh, and not alone the mere fact that we are communicating that decision. Uh, I, uh, some years ago, made a talk in which I said there has been a, a maturation of public relations over the last 30, 40 years, uh, and the progression has been, uh, first we had the how do I say it era, and that was probably uh, up until the 60s. Uh, when management would make a decision, call in their publicity manager, publicity director, some call them public relations directors, and said, you know, we've decided to do thus and so, uh, write it up for us so that we can get it out to the media. And so the PR person would go down to his typewriter and write the story and then send the release out and newspapers would publish it. Uh, in the 60s, which was a very decisive decade for public relations, perhaps the most decisive decade of all, uh, where uh, there was so many changes in society in that decade, uh, uh, women's rights, uh, minority rights, uh, the consumer's right to know, uh, environmental laws, uh, truth in lending, uh, that public relations really came to the fore. There were a lot of protest marches, and really CEOs weren't prepared for that kind of uh, environment. Uh, and hardly any other people in the organization were either. So the logical person who had to deal with them was the public relations person. And I think public relations moved from how do I say it to what do I say when these women marched on corporate headquarters or when there were protest groups from NGOs who were asking about more information on pricing or ingredients or some other subject. So the public relations person escalated, I think, in importance within the organization. And in more recent years, it has advanced even more to from what do I say to really what do I do. And today, uh, if you look at the organization charts of many of the Fortune 100, 500 companies, you'll find that the senior public relations communications officer is usually on the management board. Uh, has a title of senior vice president, or in some cases, executive vice president, and really is part of that uh, part of that decision-making process that the CEO has to articulate, uh, and uh, is playing a vital role in the management of the company. Uh, in addition to the communications function, which comes after the decision-making and the behavior of the company.